spoke about it on Gaspel. Uh, there was uh, generally one, uh, one religion that a family belonged to. And that was, uh, that was your experience of religion. It was a but now with modern transportation and communication, people of all religious traditions are brought together. You can go to a spiritual bookstore and find books on all traditions of the world. And you find with the mixing of populations that you find people of different religions brought together. So now this old idea that my religion alone is true has become dangerous. Oh, let, let me restate that. This old idea that my religion alone is true has become dangerous. Uh, we no longer, uh, it's no longer uh, uh, healthy in the world for that idea to continue. It wasn't true before, but now it is not only not true, but it's also dangerous. Uh, so, learning to see uh, that uh, all religions are true, how do we do that? It's one thing to say that, well, I believe all religions are true, but why should anyone else will accept what I say? I can share uh, two reasons right now, and there, there are one or two more, but I'll mention two reasons why. One is that if we study the different religions of the world, each of them have produced great men and women of a very saintly character. If only one were true and all of the other were from the devil, then how could they all produce great uh, saints? So that is, uh, that is one evidence that, that our religions are true, the, uh, the fact that all of them have produced great uh, saints. Another is that if we study the, uh, the saints of the different religions and their uh, experiences, uh, we find that uh, they seem to be speaking in different ways of the same thing. Uh, if, if we read the, their statements from the standpoint of experience, uh, then we, we carry away the feeling that yes, they're talking about something, uh, that uh, they're talking about a, a common uh, experience. Uh, so those two uh, evidences, those two facts are evidence of the truth of all the different religions. Uh, so uh, uh, one of the things that the 
Vedantic or, uh, and even the larger Vedic tradition uh, teaches us is the essence of religion is the search for the ultimate truth. What is it that religions argue among themselves about? They argue about rituals. They argue about what is the, what are the correct stories. They argue over doctrines and definitions. But if we look on religion as a search for the experience of the uh, uh, inexpressible truth, then uh, doctrines and uh, rituals and stories, they become relativized. Not useless and not untrue. But those are tools for reaching the ultimate. The purpose of religion is not the ritual or the doctrine or the definition. It's for coming to the experience of the ultimate truth. It uh, uh, it is the transformation of the human uh, person. What in the Orthodox tradition is called the divinization of, the, I don't know the, the Bulgarian term, but the divinization of the human person. <laughs> that is the purpose of religion. So as Swami Vivekananda said, Swami Vivekananda Kazo, of Anything that helps you towards that is good. Just don't mistake the tool for the end of the path. Uh, so again, that is uh, one of the great teachings that we can learn from the Vedic tradition. Uh, one other thing on that, let me say. Oh, one other, one other point on the on religion that we make before I move on. And that is that in the Upanishads you find that uh, the teachings are presented in the form of principles. And the principle is a truth which is universal. If it's true, it's universal. A principle, a A story may be beautiful and it may be true, but it's not universal. A ritual may be beautiful and it may be effective, but it's not universal. And that's why religions argue about rituals and stories and so forth. But a principle is uh, either true or false in itself. The principle of gravity was discovered by Newton in England. But it has nothing to do with England or the English. It has nothing to do with Sir Isaac Newton. It's either true or false. 
Poi mi viene a vedere, mi viene a vedere. E 